Hey, okay, so I want to take a quick minute to share with you my story so that you have an understanding of why this all started and how it all came about. So I uh, was pregnant with my son. He's going to be 19 as of the taping of this video, April of 2018. Um, he'll be, you know, February, and he will be 19 in just a few weeks. Um, when I was pregnant with my son, I had developed a really poor association with food and I gained a lot of weight. Now, me being in high school, I was always small. I'm only 5'1". I wasn't an athlete. I'm actually much more of an athlete over the last seven years being in my late 30s, early 40s than I ever was. Um, but I like played tennis and I was just naturally small. Um, I guess, I don't know. I now have PCOS, which makes it a challenge to um, stay lean um, and it goes in and out of seasons but anyway um, it, the but I was always small like it didn't really work hard at it right um, so I'm grateful for every lesson because I really didn't get it and at one point in time I remember before I struggled I remember seeing a woman walking out of AM PM like I can still picture it and she had a couple bags of Funyuns and a Diet Coke and I judged her, not, um, no, I did. I totally judged. Um, and I wasn't really strong in my faith at that time at all too. That's a whole nother story. I used to be atheist agnostic. So when I tell you that I'm not here to judge you, but can't help talk about it because I know what I've been saved from, um, it's real. It's coming from the sincerest place. Like I went through not believing, I went through being agnostic um, to now when my son was about a year and a half old, um, well, really, when he was pregnant with him, I started to decide that I couldn't possibly be growing this thing inside of me on my own. <laughs> but it still took me a while. I'm stubborn. But looking back, God had always protected me and planted seeds along the way. Um, and I had I was a rebellious non-believer, too. Um, so that story is for another day. But um, that's exactly why I think, though, I'm able to truly understand, one, what I've been saved from, two, like if someone else, I'm not offended if someone doesn't share my faith. And I don't believe that it's my job to convert people. I truly believe it's just my job to love them where they're at. Because if the people around me, when I was in my early 20s, were judgy or tried to convert me, which they actually did try to convert me, um, I, I wouldn't be where I am today. Because every lesson in life grows you. And I wouldn't have had them around. I wouldn't have known they were in my presence to even know to start asking questions when I started to be interested in the Lord and, and what all that meant, right? Um, so when my son was about a year and a half old is really when I gave my life to Christ. And um, it's been an amazing journey since. Definitely not perfect. Definitely it doesn't save you from everything. It doesn't give you a happily um, every day. It just means you know the outcome, <laughs> right? Um, so my point is, is that my story is when I was pregnant with my son, um, I was in an unhealthy relationship with his dad, um, and it just really was not a good situation at all. And so when I was using food to kind of numb out and to cope, and um, I definitely have like that addictive, addictive gene, and by the grace of God, um, I didn't go down that road with any other substance, right? Um, it, so when I was pregnant, that was just like, the, like that was just the, like there's, you don't recognize, at least I didn't recognize food as being like such a powerful vice. And I didn't recognize it at the time that that was my new way of numbing out or my new way of whatever. And I didn't recognize the impact it was having on my health. I only knew that I had this noise going on and constant stress and anxiety over the situation that I was trying to numb out. So when I was pregnant with my son, I gained over 65 pounds and um, I was I'm only five one. I think maybe at one point I was five too and I just kind of shrunk. But um, over 65 pounds, obviously um, he was four weeks early and he was like a little over eight pounds. So he was not the problem. So when I, at the time, like there was a lot going on. My um, when he was about a year old, um, the relationship with his dad was definitely not healthy. I got us out of that situation. And uh, when he was about a year and a half, two years old, because I had such a poor um, relationship with food. And crazy enough, after I had him, um, at some point in time, it turned into an eating disorder. 
Um, and I became bulimic and that in of itself was a huge life struggle and I struggled with it longer than I would like to admit. Um, but I did at one point in time when it was about a year and a half, two years old, get my, hit my rock bottom and feel like, okay, on the outside, it looks like I had it all together. On the outside, I was as a single mom, really had my son all the time for the most part and dealing with crazy drama. Um, I was able to provide for him. I was able to, you know, I just, I was able, right. And I work hard. I'm, I'm always driven. I've always been that way. Um, so I, I always did really well um, in court. And it's not, it's just cause I'll outwork anybody in the room, no matter what, what I'm doing, whether it's for someone else or for myself, like I, that's just how I'm wired. Um, but when he was about a year and a half, two years old, it finally hit me. Like I would spend really long days working and I did have to make a career change because I was commuting to LA for my, my career. So I went from like a career and being really successful at a really young age to taking a step back and taking a job that would be same field, but closer to home, not the commute, less pay. Um, but just to be there for my son, I didn't really have a, any other options. So there was a lot going on. Food became the vice, and but I still kept it all together on the outside. But on the inside, I lacked confidence. I lacked self-esteem. I could project a false sense of confidence in a boardroom or I was in a very male-dominated field. I've never been one to say female versus male or to say that like I've been held out back because of female because I, I, no offense, but I just don't believe in that. Um, and uh, I just, I just don't, I've never believed in excuses, I guess. Like, I just believe that you it just means you work harder to like do what you have to do, prove yourself, whatever, earn the respect. Um, so uh, when it was about a year and a half, two years old, I decided to get healthy. And when I decided to get healthy, there was nothing like what we have now. And so I started with home videotapes and I was actually able to do that for a while and see some progress. So then I thought, okay, I'll try the gym. And it was a 24 hour fitness. I had to walk into this big gym, not knowing anyone, not, I didn't know fit people, didn't hang out with fit people. If I did, I probably wouldn't have been so far out of shape, right? Um, and feeling uncomfortable in my own skin. I was like looking at videos all the time because I do get kind of, um, uh, I was going to say obsessed when I want to learn something. Like I do a lot of digging. I'm like a nerd at heart. So I was doing my research, trying to figure out what I should do in the gym and all this kind I definitely was spending more time, effort, and energy to try and learn how to get it right than most people. And so fast forward, um, I did get it right in 12 to 18 months after that because I'm also very black and white. I wanted to prove to myself that I could take that person that was lacking so much confidence and energy and just sick on the inside. I think I left that part out. So I take care of everybody else in the day, work during the day, get Dante to bed, make sure everybody was taken care of. And then I would binge at night and that turned into binging and purging. And it was just this vicious cycle. So when I finally decided to get healthy and I did a lot of research on nutrition as well at the time because of the fact that um, my subsequent is that was still, that's, that was happening and I was trying to physically change. I think the thing that prompted me to start looking at nutrition very early on was because my dad was diagnosed with type 2 diabetes, um, adult onset. It was totally lifestyle. He wasn't overweight necessarily. He just hadn't taken care of himself and ate really crappy food. Um, so I dove into nutrition, I figured out how to do it, and I completely transformed my body. And being that black and white, I wanted to prove to myself that I could do figure competitions. I really don't remember what planted that seed, but I just decided I was going to do that. Did all my training, all my nutrition, got super, super lean, um, and then went through that whole judgment cycle because by that time I was in more of a career position at a very large organization and they had seen me from going from still carrying extra weight you know Dante was like two or five at the time somewhere in between that time um he wouldn't have been two closer to five so but I'm back in like this it back into career mode super super successful just because I was working hard as always and and getting certifications to back it up and all that kind of stuff I was doing basically accounting for retirement plans to make long story short and then by the end of it I was managing um, a really large team across the country that was responsible for a couple billion in assets for our clients and the relationship management between um, my organization and the client so it was very high end and I don't say that impress you I just mean that I don't know if you can do anything when you work that hard because that's really what it was about. But I was in a high-end environment and still 
I got judged because they saw me from being overweight and being the person that would eat whatever with them at lunch and go to these after, um, part, uh, not parties, but like, um, I didn't go out too much because of uh, like, I was always home and Dante never had a sitter. My mom helped, but I, I never had sitter. Like I just was there for Dante. Um, but like when we were doing like company events or whatever, I was still somewhat drinking at that point. I wasn't really drinking, drinking. It was just, I would have a glass of wine or whatever with them to this person that like packed all my Tupperware and made all my lunches and ate every couple of hours. And literally I was shredded, shredded, like 8% body fat, no joke. And, um, and, uh, so instead of just like supporting and affirming it was judgment. I got accused of using steroids, which is like insane to me um, because they couldn't deal with, I mean, a lot of the women I worked with, because we worked really long hours and a lot of the women I worked with didn't take care of themselves. So it was easier for them to judge me and my changes and my new choices than it was for them to look at what they may or may not be doing. It's not that I never ever judged them. It was just that they, like people automatically feel insecure when you're changing and there's something inside of them that recognizes that they're not happy where they're at, it's easier to like bash you for what you're doing than to really deal with what it's bringing up inside of them. I hope that makes sense. It's really not about you when you're being judged and criticized. It really is about something that they're going through. So um, at that same time, I went through a huge transformation um, in my, my faith, and that's really where my faith was strengthened. It definitely was like, I ended up being like the example of what I used to accuse others of is like, I used to say, if you're a Christian, it's just because it's a crutch and you're not strong enough to deal with life on your own. Sorry, but, um, I, I'm not proud of it, but I'm just sharing that with you to, I don't know, let you know that like, I get it. If you don't believe it yet, I get it. Um, and now I'm proudly, yeah, it's a crutch, <laughs> but it is the most amazing like relationship I've ever had. And that is to have a personal relationship with God. So yeah, he's absolutely my support system, and um, and that's okay, right? Um, my point being that during that whole transition, as I started to get stronger, if I, as I started to recognize that I had put my value in how well I was performing at work, I had put my value in this idea of marriage and this idea of a family that was now gone, that I had put my value in all these other things when really I was perfect in my imperfections. It really took a long time to understand and have that level of confidence, but then also to physically transform my body and to see those differences and see those changes, not just physically, not just being able to walk into the room with like true centered confidence, not pride, but just like when you work hard for something, you're proud of it. Right. Um, but also the energy it gave me and the, the new outlook on life and the ability, the confidence that comes with conquering something and accomplishing it. I wish I could say that I was beyond my eating disorder at that point, but um, I was for the most part when I was lean, because reality is when people have eating disorders, unless you're anorexic, you actually can't be lean and have an eating disorder. It doesn't, most people that are bulimic are actually slightly overweight because that's a whole other story. Um, so when I was at lean, I still had it pretty much in control. Like it wasn't out of control, like when I was, um, whatever, but, um, I would find out after going through the, the first round of, of competing and whatever that I wasn't completely beyond it. Um, so anyway, fast forward to, I'm horrible at timing, but after I started competing to, um, a few years later, the company that I was with, um, was selling the division that I was running. And because I had been there for a long time and because I was one of the vice presidents, they gave me the, um, like an umbrella buffer, whatever you want to call it to help them shut down the division and they were selling it. So to help offload it to the, to the buyers. And with that, it gave me about six months worth of income and I was able to, um, play a role in transitioning it out. And I had some flexible, I had more flexible time than before. And all of that period of time from the time that I transformed to the, when that division um, changed, my relationship with God was strengthened as well as this passion. Like I cannot explain it any other way, but I wanted to teach other women, especially 
what I had learned. Like I wanted to be able to take women from feeling broken, from feeling uncomfortable in their own skin, for not liking what they look in the mirror to like hiding behind the camera. Like I don't even have a lot of pictures with Dante because I was always hiding behind the camera or him. Right. Or like, I don't even have any, like, I wish I had this amazing before photo. I don't because no one takes pictures when they don't feel good about themselves. Right. And, um, I wanted to take that, those women that feel the way that I felt and show them a different way and show them the right way. And then I, so I took this huge leap of faith. I felt this impression when I was, it's not like an auto, it's like some people will call it like an intuition, a gut feeling, whatever you want, that I was supposed to go do that full time. And I remember talking back to God and thinking, seriously? Because remember, single mom in Orange County that had built up a lifestyle. It's not like we lived in like this big, huge house, but you know, had the nice car, had the conveniences, Dante was in private school. Like, how am I going to keep all of that up at what a personal trainer makes? Because personal trainers, especially back then, did not, and I knew enough to know that they didn't make very much. And but I really wanted to be able to do this. So I first thought I would just do it kind of on the side and maybe just take a break. I was working 50, 60 hours a, a week in corporate and I knew I was gonna have a six month um, budget or buffer. And so I went to my family, it's actually Dante's uncle, who is an amazing Christian man and his wife. Um, and they owned their own private gym in Orange County. And I uh, told them the idea and they said, I think you should do it. We'll hire you, get your certification, blah, blah. So I went and started getting certifications. I started training for them, did personal training, did boot camps. And then I took it a step for, further. Within about a year, um, Steve, the person that, my son's uncle, the person that really got me started and believed in me, Steve and Cynthia, I, um, I went to a conference called Fitness Business Summit. And at that conference, I met Bedro Schoolian. And at that conference, I decided to open Fit Buddy Boot Camp. And I moved out to the Inland Empire again, in all transparency. It was a relationship in my life that brought me out here. I don't regret anything because of the fact that I'm where I am today, everything happens for a reason. I wouldn't have my own business, my own entity, if it wasn't for um, every person that played a role, right? Um, so we moved, uh, Dante and I moved out here, and I uh, opened Calamesa Fit Body Boot Camp, and we started originally at the park with about 20 people. I'd come up here on Saturdays um, and run it at the park, and then when we eventually moved out here, um, opened the Calamesa location, and within a year of that, opened up the Redlands location. And so now with the help of an amazing team, um, I went through another divorce. <laughs> um, I don't mean to laugh it off. It's not, I just think it's like, thankfully, I think I finally found I'm on marriage three. Yes, I am in all transparency. Um, I'm not proud of it, but it is what it is. And um, I'm super thankful that um, for every lesson, I just would never give you marriage advice. <laughs> I could give you health and fitness advice. <laughs> marriage is hard. <laughs> I'm still figuring that one out, but I think I got this one right. Um, my point being that that is why we do what we do. So it, I consider it an absolute, and by the grace of God, we've been in business for eight years because all of the, whatever I thought I knew in corporate America does not apply when you don't have a team that does your marketing for you, that does your accounting for you, that does you know X, Y, and Z for you. I really ran a very small picture of the over, it sounded like I had a lot of responsibility, but it really was a very small piece of a very big puzzle. And when you own your own organization, you realize that very fast. Um, or not so fast, but I'm very blessed. I've had amazing coaches along the way. And over the last eight years, I um, had the honor of speaking at that fitness business summit a year after, I think it was the first year of me busy, being in business. I was able to um, speak in front of hundreds of people and webcasts for to thousands um, on the power of mindset. I somehow I've become known to do to, for that niche. Um, because I do believe a lot of what we struggle with and uh, what we can accomplish is based on our perspective. And um, you guys will hear me say a lot that it really comes down to our thoughts. And I realize now innately that I was doing that 18 years ago when I was trying to get healthy. I realized somehow, now I realize that it was a God thing, but somehow at the time I innately knew to start catching my thoughts and retraining my thoughts. and. Um, focusing on positives and literally 
rewiring my thought process and what I focused on. But that's a whole nother module because it's in such a critical key of transformation. It's not just the workouts, it's not just the nutrition, but it's literally um, retooling our beliefs and because our beliefs, our thoughts, and then our thoughts affect our beliefs. Our beliefs affect our choices. Our choices applied consistently over time create our habits. Our habits then create our lifestyle. So until we start at the very beginning, we're never going to get to the end that we're fully capable of. We can put all kinds of workouts, nutrition, and everything else on top of it, but if your foundation is still a bunch of stinking thinking and corrupted wiring, then it's never going to be a solid foundation and you won't be able to achieve the fullest extent of what you're capable of. Um, so it's a big part of what I'm passionate about and what I want to deliver to every single person that calls us, reaches out to us, or walks through our door. I consider it a huge honor and a blessing for every single person that crosses my path. I do not take any single person for granted. I believe every person is for a reason, whether it be for a moment in time or for a season. It's my honor and privilege to serve. I hope that helps. Bye.